news you can use. Uh, had several people ask if we could dig a little deeper into how the interest rates are working with regard to housing and also what the, the future looks like with regard to the housing shortage. And so let's start off with um, what the Wall Street Journal has called a cautionary tale. It's the the uh, country of Canada to our north, <clears throat> maybe a little bit more socialistic than what we have in the United States, but they've got a much worse problem on the housing front than we do. Uh, currently, the median home price in Canada is $816,700. When you convert that over to US, it's around 600 and some thousand dollars, 50% higher than what we've got. Uh, Currently, our, our average house in the U.S., the median home price, is about $407,000. So theirs started off lower than us about 10 years ago, and now it's 50% higher. <clears throat> Last week, we talked, earlier this week, we talked about uh, Canada had a bill before its uh, parliament to basically ban foreigners from owning property in the country of Canada. And actually, they didn't even wait around for that. The prime minister announced a few days ago that he was making a uh, executive decision to ban all foreign purchases of property in the country of Canada for the next two years. And that they were also considering more extreme measures. Now, by more extreme measures, <clears throat> they've dropped some kind of uh, uh, canary in the mine shaft type things where they put some, some uh, trial balloons some floaters out there to see how people would react to it. One of them, is that they may encourage any foreign ownership of property currently in the country to voluntarily sell. Now that's the first step. Um, for those of you who are students of history, that's what they told the, the Jewish people in Germany in the 1930s, you should voluntarily leave the country. Of course, later on, they incarcerated everybody. Um, and so I predict what they'll do is they'll start asking people to voluntarily give up their homes but later on they will force them to sell, which is the first step towards nationalization of housing uh, in Canada, in my opinion. There's a couple of other things that they've got, uh, you know, played up, but that's the most extreme. Here in this country, uh, we have the same problem that they've got in Canada. There's a shortage of houses. There are more people who would love to buy houses <clears throat> than have the ability to uh, get a house now just because there's a shortage of housing stock across the board. Populations have grown, housing stock has not. Uh, currently in the United States, there are 140,000 permits that have been issued that have been delayed. In other words, these are builders who are ready to break ground. It's shovel ready. Everything's ready to go, but they are not building those houses primarily because the costs are way too high. And why is that? Well, inflation. Inflation is... Um, I put that firmly at the doorstep of the Fed. Uh, these guys have been looking down the barrel of that gun for a long time, and they've walked around with this bazooka that they've been carrying called interest rate increases, but they've been unwilling to use it. Now we've got a situation where when they finally do raise the rates, it will probably be too little, too late, and it, 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 realistically it's going to be a case where the cure ends up killing uh, the patient. Canada, like I said, has got it worse. So we can watch and see what happens in Canada for the next year or two um, and then figure that we're going to be slightly behind that. But uh, we're having that same situation. We've got a shortage of houses. Um, you know, there are always places for people to live, but there's a particular dynamic. There's a particular uh, shiny object that everybody wants, and it's the, basically the home in the suburbs with the yard and that type of thing. And there is not enough of that particular product out there. There's still plenty of houses. There's still plenty of domiciles for people to live in. When you figure apartments, mobile home parks, rental houses, <clears throat> housing in the city, uh, in the cities, uh, urban type uh, housing, uh, there's enough for everybody to put a roof over their head, but more people want to be in this one particular demographic uh, suburban houses with a yard, three bedroom, two bath, 1800 square feet. There's just not enough of that product out there right now. So fortunately, as the interest rates do go up, uh, there are less and less buyers in the marketplace. So people will eventually settle and they'll figure, okay, I can't afford to live in that three, two in the suburbs. Uh, it's too expensive. I can't afford it. So I will go ahead and stay longer in the condo in downtown San Diego, or I will, you know, live in a, a nice mobile home park 
Uh, or there's some new apartments they built the last couple of years around the corner. They look pretty nice. They're offering deals. I'll go live there. So I think water will seek itself. I think we'll eventually get through the, the demand issues, the demand versus supply. And as always, it will tend to go the other way around. But it's a matter of who gets to the finish line first, whether it's the Fed non-use of the bazooka when they eventually use it. It will kill the economy, in my opinion. Uh, or it's people's demand for these houses, which will eventually abate. You know, you can't get something long enough to just give up hope. And I think that's what's going to happen. Um, and so we're going to see. Uh, but I would keep an eye on Canada. It's a, a small, much smaller market than the U.S., but they seem to be ahead of the curve in terms of some of the problems that uh, we're going to be seeing and that we're seeing now. Uh, they're already experiencing. So keep an eye on what the government does with regard to housing stock up there. And if they try to nationalize it, I, you know, I've talked about this over the last couple of years, but I wouldn't put it past our government to try and nationalize to a certain degree uh, housing as a human right. There, there are coalitions uh, that are for UBI, uh, universal basic income, and UBH, universal basic housing. And that may end up being the case. Um, so as always, we're gonna stay on top of that curve in terms of the news, predictions, economy, and we will let you guys know. All right, sorry there was no good news in that, uh, but you'd rather have the truth, I think, than uh, smoke blown up your skirt. Anyway, that is our news you can use for today.